kind of take notice of where that knob is and loosen it up another turn and have it relatively loose. Then you merely watch the end of the rod and what I'm going to try to demonstrate to you is what it looks like when you get a bite. If you see that rod and it pulls down it, with the current taking it and it has a jerky motion going away from the ocean coming back, nine times out of ten what is happening there is the sinker is being pulled down by the current and then it's, it's cutting loose and it's jittering back. But now if you see the motion, a jerking motion going toward the beach and down, that's a fish. Eight out of ten fish are going to hook themselves, so you don't really have to worry about setting a hook on them and, and running over and grabbing it. But when you see that rod go down and that fish is going with it, and he, the, the rod's jerking toward the ocean, you've got a fish on, you merely you walk over and be sure that you remember to tighten that drag back up the full turn that you loosened it and keep your line in and you'll feel the fish when it's tight and just raise the rod. You don't have to try to tear the hook out of his mouth. That's not necessary. It doesn't work any other because the line has too much stretch in it. But merely raise your rod. You'll feel the fish. Now if he decides to go the other way with you, if you got a good fish on there and he's going the other way with you, what you want to do is let him go. Let that fish go. Don't try to work against the fish. You keep that rod just about eye level. If you feel the slack coming out of that line, then you take the rod and raise the rod to take the slack out. You raise the rod to take the slack out. The slack's out, then you lower the rod, and then you reel. You're not reeling the fish, you're just reeling to take the slack up as you lower the rod. Then you get down eye level again, you do the same thing, you keep repeating this. So you get this fish closer to the beach. When you're playing the fish, take your hand and put it in front of the reel. That way you're not holding the weight of that reel. The weight of the reel is, is compensating for the length of the rod and it's a lot easier. Keep the handle of the reel to where it will touch your elbow when you're doing the lifting. Then you have, it's like a lever, it doesn't wear you out. And when you turn that reel handle, you don't use your whole hand, just use your wrist. Remember, this is not a winch, it's merely to take in slack, so you don't have to push real hard as you're going down, just move that wrist. You'll pick it up a lot easier and you won't wear yourself out. Now this is where the surf fishing comes to play. You've got a nice fish on, you can, majority of times you can see him and he's a nice big one and you get excited and your first tendency is to pull him out of the water. You don't want to do that, you want to let that wave bring that fish to the beach. And all you do there, as that wave comes in, use your preferential vision and look as the wave comes in, raise that rod with that wave. Go down and take that slack in. Raise that rod with the wave, take the slack in. You're getting close to the beach, you got a big wave, and dang, he, he goes the other way on you. Give to him. Don't try to work against the wave. Give to him, and sooner or later, you're going to wash him right up on the beach. And as you get him up on the beach, get him up to where he can't get back in the water, just let the wave bring him up, and let that fish lay there. If you want, you can take and walk over and pick the fish up, and this is another little tip. Take your rod, and any time that you don't have a sand strike or a place to put the rod, don't set it down on the sand or put it behind the Merely put it underneath your armpit, and it'll stay there. You can handle your rod, and there again, give yourself a, take enough line off the reel so that you can walk over, reach down, Pick your fish up by the leader, and you can lift him up. There again, you can take your arm, put it right, your, your rod, I mean, underneath your armpit, and hold the rod, and you can reach over, and you can take that fish off. Now, if you're going to keep this fish, there's no problem with holding him in the gills. That is probably the best place to get him, but that's going to kill him. If you're not going to keep the fish, if he's too small, what I recommend that you do is have a damp rag. Take the fish with the damp rag, take the hook off, and let him go on his merry way. Don't kick him back in the water. Walk over, try to put him in the water, the same conditions you took him out of the water. Now, if you have a skate, and nobody likes a skate, it's, uh, they, people refer to them as trash fish, but there's no such thing as a trash fish. Everything's got its purpose, 
and it should go back in the water. But now a skate is a little bit of a problem to get off of a hook. And if you have that skate, which you want to do, bring him right up to the beach, the same as I said, pick him up and flip him over to where his belly is facing you. In other words, he's, you've got his back down. Now you be careful of the back because it has spines. But if you turn him over, the right part of his belly is facing you, you can take your foot, put it on the belly of that fish, and what I recommend is a pair of pliers, or with the skate, he really, his lips are real rubbery. They're not so much toothy, but they're rubbery and they're, they're hard to get the hook at. So you should have, anyhow, a pair of long nose pliers that have a cutter provision for it in case you have to cut a hook. Because if a fish has got a hook way in his mouth, rather than rip it out, just cut it off, and if you're not using stainless steel hooks, it'll rust out. But on that skate, just merely go on and take the pliers and take the hook out of his mouth, or his hands if it's not too hard for you to get it, and take your pliers and pick him up by his tail and walk him over and put him back in the water. A skate is probably one of the most important fish to get back in the water. A lot of people throw him on the beach, and what happens there, he lays up on that beach, he dries out, his back is covered with spines. Little kid comes down on summer vacation, steps on that skate, that's the end of the ball game for the whole family. Now we're going to get into the good part. This is the part that I like, and that's throwing metal. Primarily when you're going to be doing this is going to be early in the morning and late in the evening. Uh, if, you're, if you're lucky enough to have a four-wheel drive, what you want to do is just ride along and see if you can see those birds working out there and dip it. You see them birds diving down toward the water and uh, fish flashing underneath of them. What you want to do then, you want to use metal. And there again, when you're, even when you're bottom fishing, in the middle of the day, it can happen. They can pop up right in front of you. The thing you want to do then is get that rod out of the water. And the lures, the two best lures down here that I've found, uh, you, a lot of people say different things, but it's a sting silver made by a lot of different companies. So you want to kind of be careful when you buy one. It doesn't really matter who makes it. But what you want to do when you buy one of these lures, you want the chrome one and you want the pink and white. Uh, I pretty much like the pink and white. I just like it better. It works real well for me, and that's probably because I use it more. But again, the key is you don't want one that weighs any less than an ounce and three quarters. So be sure to look on the package or ask the, the salesman at the store, is it an ounce and three quarter? If it's less than that, you don't want it. And if it's more than two ounces, you don't want it. Two ounces is ideal. So an ounce and three quarter to two ounce, that's the two weights that you're looking for. And if you have one of these rods that, like I described, especially a Bendor surf system rod, that'll throw this thing out of sight. It really will. So now we've seen fish breaking out, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to catch them, and probably what they're going to be is bluefish or Spanish mackerel. Now what you want to do when you're doing that, you start out with the silver one, and you can hook it right to the swivel that you have on your line. You won't have any problem with that. If they're small bluefish, you're not going to have any trouble with them cutting the line. So you go ahead and, and try that. If you're not having any problems uh, with your line being cut off, then you won't have to go to a steel leader. But if you're into bigger bluefish, you're going to lose a lot of lures unless you use steel leader. And by steel leader, that's something about 18 inches long in front of your spoon, or you can use a spoon like this for bluefish rather than the sting silvers. But this is pretty much a, a bluefish lure uh, with, the, with the metal on it. And I still think that you're better off fishing with the, with the sting silvers. Now, when you're casting to these fish, what you're going to do, you don't want to throw right underneath those birds where you see the fish. You want to try to get on the other side of them and try to keep your line from getting in those birds. So you want to throw it as far as you can on the other side or where you see those birds working and bring that lure underneath the birds. And that's all you need to do in real, at a, at a moderate space, a, a moderate speed. If you're not having any luck with that, pick up on the speed. And don't be bashful. If you see a man standing next to you and he's catching fish and you're not, see what he's using and see how fast he's turning that reel. If they're Spanish mackerel, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take that swivel off and tie that lure direct. Just merely cut it off and tie the lure with the same knot that I showed you to tie the swivel on. Run it through two times, run it around, go through the double loop, and pull it tight on the lure. 
Mackerel really like this pink and white lure. So if that's what it is, if it's Spanish mackerel, this is a lure that I highly recommend. And what you want to do then, they like a little faster retrieve. So you want to reel, turn that handle a little bit faster. Pick up on the speed and see if that doesn't help you. Now if it doesn't work, of course, alter. Fast, slow, fast until you, you get the ticket. But the only thing you have to be sure, if this other guy's catching fish and you're not, it's quite possible that he's casting farther than you are. So there's nothing you can do about that if you're already casting as far as you can. But that's what you want to do when you're throwing metal. Uh, even if that fish, you are catching them, and it seems like that they're taking it halfway from the beach to where you're casting, you don't know how far that fish has followed that lure. So throw it out as far as you can cast it. Distance is a key. When you're fishing with a lure, you throw it as far as you can. The longer that lure is in the water, the better your chances are of a fish picking it up. If you're monkeying around fishing halfway, that's no good. Fish it, throw as far as you can, try to bring it into the breaking fish or underneath the birds, and you'll find that that'll work real 